Hello, welcome, good evening, or morning, or afternoon, or pre-noon, good night, one of those, probably, um, uh, hey, hello, yes, it, for some reason it doesn't say that in this chat window, one second, let me just reload again, uh, that is strange. No, we're not driving obviously today. Let me just reload the page quickly. Oh, now it now it's now I can see your messages. Uh, that is good. Okay, for some reason it wasn't displaying your previous messages. Um, yes, hello, Kangafango, hello, Mr. W. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, today's train simulator again, as you can probably tell by now. I mean, it's a kind of a pattern that's emerging, right? Um, nice, it works now. Yes. So, today we're going to drive on a route, uh, which is the second route that I've picked up on Black Friday uh, for Train Simulator. I haven't driven on it yet. Uh, by the way, the, the other one is the uh, interurban one, which I have played on, but I haven't streamed yet. This is the other one, which I haven't played on at all. Um, so, let's just show you on the map. Context for YouTube folk. Stream's title is Electric Buzz. Yes. So, um, if you look here, this is where we'll be driving today. Yes? In South Africa. Indeed. Yes, so. Mm, right. Yes, by, by the way, by South Africa, I literally mean South Africa, the country. So, if we look into here, this route is set here between uh, the town, well, the city of uh, Peter Maritzburg and Ladysmith, I believe. So, this, uh, maybe if it's better if I show you like this. So, from down here, if you can see that, Maybe we can just zoom in a little bit without it crashing. So from down here, the route goes all the way up to Ladysmith, I believe. Uh, so, I don't know how much of that we'll cover today, but hopefully quite a bit of it. So, let me just quickly reach out and then we'll get going. Uh, ooh, we're driving Ladysmith, uh, Pimaritz, Pimaritzburg today? Um, yes, or Woodhead. Woodhead was another contestant. That was actually a route that I wanted to drive on, but then I got the new stuff from the Black Friday sale, so I want to do those first, because I haven't played with many of those things yet. Um, it shows two pictures of your face and chat in the stream. Of course it does. That's OBS's screen, because OBS is displaying the stream, which is recording the screen. So it's recording the screen, which is displaying the stream, which is displaying the stream, which is displaying the stream, and so it shows all of it. Um, yes. Uh, so. Yes, because OBS is in the background. All right, it shows the stream with his face cam, which shows the stream again, etc. Yes. By the way, did you notice that it was the small window, not the large window? No? Good thing I did. Also, Black Friday sale. Last time I checked, it was called Autumn Sale. It's the same thing. So, let's get started. If the volume, if the volume is uh, too loud or too quiet, please let me know. I can change it. So, here we go. This is our locomotive for the day. I did not read what that just said. Uh, that is concerning. What was the key to see? to see the last message uh, mm, I wanted to read it I don't know if you can display a previous message anyway it doesn't matter um oh steam Anyway, hmm, on stream, yes. Who's excited? Very nice train. I'll be right back. Okay, sure. See you soon. Yeah, it is a very nice train. Uh, we've got, 
by the looks of it, freight and a little bit of passenger as well at the back. By the way, this is a narrow gauge train, so what do I need to do? Oh, I need to apparently put up the pantographs. Um, I've not driven this locomotive yet. So let's see if I can figure this out. So this I are these are the headlights. Alright, so let's just have those on. Are those on? Yes, those are on. We've got cab lights. Sure. Well, let's just turn them off for now in case it lags too much. Uh, what are those things? This is... Oh, pantograph, up, down. That's exactly what I want. Uh, and that's probably the rear one, so... Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, and that is the rear one, which is the one I want. And it's just starting up in the background. Uh, Alright, this is... Oh, windscreen wipers. Exactly what we need. Hmm. <laughs> Does this have a speed or is it a button? No, it's a button. I see. Okay. Um, narrow gauge, you say? Here's an idea for next time. Drive this on chorus. Ooh, worrying. Yeah. Only I don't think it's chorus. I think it is... Uh, chorus gauge. I think this is a bit wider. So. Let's release the brake. I'm assuming this has uh, automatically lapped brakes. Handle off. Yes, it does have automatically lap brakes. That's great. Put in the forward gear. Let's see what the horn sounds like. Here, what the horn. That's the horn. Does not have a bell. So let's get going. Let's get going a little bit faster. <laughs> And by the way, this is a career scenario, which means that because of all the stuff inside, it's probably gonna be gonna be a little bit late, probably. Is there a wheel slip indicator here? Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, you're probably right. Is this NG3 or Summit? I am not sure. It might be meter gauge. Or a variation of meter gauge. Um, I've got to say, that is nice. Or, uh, nice one. Yes. So, is this the first TS stream that isn't quick drive? Apart from the GG1? Actually, no. Because the chorus railway stuff wasn't quick drive. How many locomotives do we have? Oh, we've only got one. Interesting. I'm assuming that green means we're good to go. Uh, oh yeah, true. Exactly. <laughs> and the reason why I'm not uh, flooring it, basically, is because there's quite a heavy train, we're going uphill and it's raining, so I don't want to get wheel slip. Because in career mode, wheel slip does actually detract uh, or subtract points from you. And I want to get the highest score I can. Let's just save now that we're going. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but was this locomotive featured in a version of trains years and years ago? Uh, it may very, very well have been. Or if not this one, a very similar one, but it may have been this one. Back, hello. We're we've just started moving. Oh, and there's one coming up ahead. I'm a bit careful about when I'm reading chat because I might end up speeding if I'm not careful. Mm. 
they should be fine to be able to read chat like this. Um, red and blue version with stripes. Mm. There are different repaints of this in this route, yes. Um, welcome back. Can you create routes in Train Simulator? Yes, you can. However, in Train Simulator, so Dovetail Games Train Simulator, the assets you can use are limited to the assets that come with DLC routes that you've bought. This means that if you share a route you've made, anyone who wants to download it has to also own all of those DLCs, which means you have far fewer assets to use, and it's a bit annoying for people who want to play your route. Uh, additionally, the editor in Train Simulator, in most respects, is uh, very much... What's the word? The opposite of superior. Um, worse. It's much worse than in Trains. Because, um, for example, in Train Simulator, there is no way to search for assets. Yeah, you can't search for assets. You can import assets from different DLCs, but there is no way you can actually uh, say, okay, I've used this specific signal, for example, if you've got... Um, the thing is, if you import assets from a root, then you have to import all of the assets from the root. So if you want, for example, the trees from this root and the tracks from that root, you have to import both of those. If you import both of those, you get all of the signals and uh, scenery objects, trackside objects, all of that as well which means you can end up having hundreds of signals in the little uh, scroll window and you have to write down the name of the signal you are using because otherwise you can't find it because you won't be able to get the asset, you won't be able to search for the assets, which, yeah, the editor, the train simulator editor really isn't uh, optimized for uh, personal use for customers. If you want if you're making your own DLC, you're making your own assets, then if you I'm assuming that if you import your own assets it won't be that cluttered and if you import your own assets, then you will know what those assets are because well you made them. But if you're using other people's assets, assets from DLCs, then yeah, not that great. Let me just quickly save and then continue to read chat. Um, and the rain looks quite realistic. Yes, it does. It does. Uh, yes, although the train is generally more user-friendly. Exactly. The passing train looks so much closer than it is. Yeah. For example, there isn't a, an asset search function in TS Editor from what I know. Mm -hmm. Sure, I meant the striped variants of trains. Oh, right. Maybe. I don't know. So, has to own the same payware. Yes. Inferior. Exactly. Inferior. I don't know why I couldn't remember that word. Ouch, big ouch. Shreys, not really. I'm pretty sure you can import trains separately from scenery objects. Trains, maybe. Trains, maybe. Uh, there are three checkboxes for uh, every pack to import. Uh, or two for some. There are some choices in video games which make you think, why the hell did they do it like that? Uh, yes, that is true. However, in this case, it's at least it's quite clear why they did it. The entire um, the entire business model that is behind Train Simulator, Dovetail Games Train Simulator, is that either Dovetail Games themselves or third-party developers create their own routes, upload them as payware, and then, of course, pay royalties to uh, Dovetail Games, which means that the source for new content for just consumers really has to go through DLC. If it was easy for players to create their own routes, their own content, uh, then that would go against their own business model. So it actually makes quite a lot of sense that they would make the 
uh, editor as unuser-friendly as they have and restrict the assets as much as they have. In Trains, so uh, N3V games Trains, uh, it's different like that because they improve, they, their business model is more, they improve, they improve their core game, the things in that they get uh, put in new features, new, new stuff like that, so that people continue to buy the new versions of the actual application. And yes, there is DLC for that as well. However, most assets are free. And the skill comes in putting them together. Uh, but yes, tra the in trains is much more for creating your own stuff um, than trains are Um Transformation Only Health, I think, also came with a quite a big variety of European, UK, DE, and American assets, um, including trains, but then they split that content off so that it's two separate 11.99 paper packs. Yes. Yeah, but the lack of search features, having to trawl through so much content finds specific signal box. Mm, yeah, exactly, but that, but if it's not meant for large or for the, the consumer base to use it, necessarily, then it makes sense that they wouldn't put that much um, uh, ease of life stuff in there, if that makes sense. The brakes with this are quite interesting. <laughs> also, that coal texture looks like a, a bit like the one from Trains. <laughs> Yowie wowie. Powie bowie? <laughs> it's a bit trolly, isn't it? Well, I don't think that's the right word for it because Train Simulator isn't advertised really as a game for you to create your own content. It's advertised more as well, what it is a driving simulator. If they advertised that you can make your own routes and all of that stuff and have that one of the key selling points of the game, then yeah, I'd say that it would be uh, trolly, as you put it. However, since they don't advertise it as such, I don't think that's a correct word for it. Um, I'm just trying to keep my speed under 70 kilometers per hour, because I do think we're using se uh, kilometers per hour here. Um, yes. This route does get quite mountainous later on. Hopefully we'll get there. Um, could you also eight count of th this a little? Uh, one second, just make sure. Okay, we're going to climb again. That's good. Um, Charles, could you also eight cam out of this little trench to show us the sh surrounding scenery? Oh, there's a dam there. Interesting. Yes, but it does get quite mountainous, as I said before. Um, the TS editor does have its ups upsides too, though. Yes, it does. It does. It does have uh, its upsides, as uh, Kango Fango put it. Um, the 
Yes, for example, the way you lay down splines. Well, yeah, laying down tracks in Train Simulator in a realistic manner is easier because in trains, if you've paid attention uh, to me stream, if you've played yourself, um, if you place down a spline, then the next spline you place also affects how the previous spline gets uh, interpolated. So it can be a bit difficult to lay down realistic looking tracks. In Train Simulator, it doesn't work like that. It, if you place down a track, then it's static. It's going to remain like that. You're not going to be able to manipulate the curve in that way afterwards, which is in most cases better because it's easier to make realistic tracks with. However, in some cases, the other option is also better. Mm. But yeah, overall, I'd say that's true. Um, should I just do the coaches have interiors? I don't know. Yes, they do. Apparently, no smoking. There we go. Oh, it's raining again. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, true, I guess. I look forward to it. I uh, look forward to what? Do you mean? Omzi 2 map editor is much more obscure than TSS though. In TS it's really a, a big button in the main menu. In Omzi 2 you have to enter a com command in Steam properties, set launch codes, and once you've done that, start Omzi 2 and from Steam will launch the editor instead. Yes, that is correct. Very nice. Damn, that's scenery is flat. <laughs> well, it'll get mountainous, don't worry. Uh, I meant, damn, that's nice. <laughs> there we go. Oh, hello, Slovak. This is what we're driving. Narrow gauge. South Africa. Quite nice. This is our train. I haven't, uh, I haven't driven on this route yet. Uh, this is another one that I picked up on uh, Black Fr uh, on Black Friday. Um, hello, hi, yay! They have got interiors. Does the passenger interior also come with raindrops on the glass? Yes, it does. It does. Um, right. Spoonet. Spoonet? I mean, if you say so. So you can see, there are actually raindrops on the glass here. Nice! Yes, I agree. I especially am looking forward to the more mountainous parts of this route, which we will get to, hopefully. If the time... Uh, if, if we've got enough time. Shall I just read the text on the side of the locomotive? Oh, right. Spoonette. The company name. Yeah, in interesting. Right, I'm going to fly to the other side now because there's a tunnel and I don't want to miss the entrance. <laughs> oh. oh the, yes, the exterior lights are There we go, cab light. It's got a cab light. That's good. We're reaching the summit. Um, uh, nice. Uh, I'm especially looking forward to when we get to the more mountainous bits, which we will get to. Two hours later. I know it might not seem like it, but we will get there. <laughs> I mean, if you think that's going to be the case. Actually, does this locomotive have dynamic brakes? What were the... Are these? 
But yes, it does have dynamic brakes. Hurrah! I've been using the train brakes to try to get this down the hill. But using the dynamics is obviously much, 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 much better. Um, yes. Gives much more uh, gentle control over it. Um... Quite dark in the tunnel, innit? Mm, yeah, I mean, it's a tunnel. <laughs> Has anyone bought a, brought a torch? Oops, nope, but apparently I've brought some speeding. Oh, that was unfortunate. Um, huzzah! Yes. Do the carriages feature interior lights too? I don't know. By the way, in case you need a little refresher, dynamic brakes use a locomotive's electric traction motors, which are on the wheels, which actually turn the wheels, uh, and uses the friction of the locomotive driving to generate electricity, which then brakes, uh, basically turns the motors into brakes. Um, sorry for making you use p -turners. I accept your apology. <laughs> but no, it's not that. Serious. Um, how does one buy speeding? Well, you know what a speeding ticket is, yeah? Well, you speed and then you pay money for having sped. So essentially, you buy having sped. <laughs> I know it doesn't, it's not very accurate. Hopefully, you'll get, you'll still get gold. Hopefully. Oh, we have to stop at the next station. I saw it this time. Uh, it's easy. You buy a throttle lever, screw it to a locomotive, then turn it to notch it, and then you and then you'll get it. <laughs> exactly. That's another way. XD. Hmm. I do like a good long narrow gauge route. Lions Rover 1. Nice. I wonder if there are actual uh, AI lions on this route. I doubt it. I should probably start braking a bit more. Although, this is kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. Let follow their own custom description navigate nav mesh system. <laughs> I mean, it would be impressive to see that in Train Simulator. Uh, hmm. Hmm. We, do we need... Oh, yeah, sure. Let's keep it on. Because we do actually have two passenger cars at the back. Which is why we need to stop at the station. Alright, so let's prepare the train brake for this. Let's put it into graduated self-lap. Oh, let's, no, let's release it first and then we'll slow down in a bit. We're only going 20 km per hour. Transport Fever 2 has animals, why can't yes? Well, there are animals, sometimes there are birds flying around or uh, homo sapiens walking around on the platform. When am I supposed to arrive? Oh yeah, I'm four minutes late, which is probably mostly from um, mostly from the uh, in the beginning when I tried to figure out the the way the pantograph worked. Open the doors. 
need to actually open, that's good. Uh, canines too? <laughs> I mean, maybe it can, I don't know. Canines too, I don't know, perhaps. Just uh, playing with the Doppler effect there. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, well, it's gone. Right, we're good to go. Actually, let's save first. Can I open this window? No, I can't. In some locomotives you can open the windows. Freight? You expect me to haul freight? Never! The freight would just damage my swervers, and the coal would dirt your beautiful paint job. Paintwork. Oops, gonna speed. Maybe gonna speed. Nope, not gonna speed. Hopefully. I get the reference. <laughs> I do. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it stopped raining. Good. Uh, swervers? What do you say? You did say swerver. Swerves. Oh, swerves. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, thanks. Nice. Yeah. Do you get it, Mr. W? Nope, sorry. Ah. Hmm. It was a reference to Daisy from Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes, it was. I think by the time I stopped watching that show, the more modern ones hadn't come out, come in yet. No, that is an old reference. Some of the, f it was some of the first Thomas episodes. Basically, the, the first Daisy episode, I think it was, from, yeah, the CGI ones. I find it quite difficult to get the balance for how much I need to have the throttle open to keep a constant speed, which is why I think I'm also another reason why I'm a bit late. Late. Um, I don't remember Daisy. Daisy was the green rail car. You know, the one who didn't want to pull the milk. Oops, got a speed. There we go. There's the speed. I completely forgot that there was a 40 coming up. I did register it, but then I uh, forgot about it. <laughs> uh, where Daisy refused to pull the milk wagon because she was a rail car. Hmm? I remember Molly, who was yellow and whirly, who was smelly. 
properly with mm -hmm. Miss Daisy. I'm assuming that's a good correct thing. Shut eyes. Nope, still nothing. I would have sworn it was Whirly. I don't know. Oh, her! Apparently, yes. I remember that now. One of the diesels. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I did say rail car. And yes, there, there are there are steam rail cars. However, those are far, far less common than these ones. Wow, that brings back memories. Mm, I bet it does. You can see that it's already getting a bit more hilly because we're constantly, we're constantly climbing up. Constantly climbing up. I hadn't heard them call it a rail car though. It is a rail car. What would you say it's called? Daisy the diesel rail car. Exactly. Where are the twin diesels based on this? Um, <laughs> Iron Ari and Iron Birch? To be honest, I don't remember really. This is nice though. Actually, I always call them diesels? Uh, yes. But I mean rail car specifically. So where it's basically a carriage that is uh, powering itself, which is not um, coupled up to other carriages. So just a single carriage which powers itself. How would you call that? I would call that a rail car. But what did you call it? Uh, bingo. Mm hmm. Getting up to 50 again soon. Who lured Stepney into his Martial shadows? I think that's how they were ref referred to in the show as diesels. Yes, I mean, they are diesel locomotives. However, she is a rail car. A diesel rail car. Because rail car it doesn't denote where the power comes from. It's more what type of locomotive it is. Yeah, I get what you mean. When he got lost in the fog and then, yeah. Oh, in the Magic Railroad, the guy with the claw, I think, I can't remember his name was. I do. I do. Like, I just don't like strap or something. Hmm. Actually, I think this might be quite a nice place for the thumbnail to go. Maybe something like this, actually. Did not need to make this big. Oh, I'm slowing down too much, I've realized. Oh, yes, I am. The grades increased. Um. Pinchy was named Law. Uh, Bingo, such a busy name. Yeah, I really shouldn't have got rid of the Magic Railroad. It was a very old combination. Odd combination. I like my lunch steamed. Oh, apparently that's Diesel 10's line. Oh, she's looking at me. I think I'll just go back to the locomotive. <laughs> Uh, it's so bizarre when you get hit from something from your childhood. Yeah. You see it in a completely different light then, don't you? Oh, he's got a caboose. How interesting. This is also a nice view. Leaning out the window. Leaning out the window. Oh, we've got a stop up ahead. Hmm. Uh, 
Didn't he have nicknames for them like Twinkles and Tin Kettle for Derby? Creepy. Yeah. Yes, Twinkles definitely. Tin Kettle maybe. I've only watched Toy the Metal once and that was still two years ago. Um, I think you've watched it twice. If I remember correctly. But I may be mistaken. Also, yeah, it's the sudden burst of vibrant memories that gets ya. <laughs> Yes, calling all engines. Uh, Kylie Minogue performed one of the great songs. I don't know. But uh, again, bingo. <laughs> By the way, how do you like the sound of this locomotive? Quite good, isn't it? The only movie where Disney Channel wears his happy face. I think that's right. Also, with these platforms, uh, they're grass covered. It's probably just soil held up by a retaining wall, if I had to guess. Or maybe they've deliberately put um, grass on top of uh, something else. But yeah, this is interesting. Actually, I'll save before we stop here. Just so that... In case something crashes, and by something I mean uh, something that would cause a uh, train simulator to stop working, I've got a place right here. And open doors. Maybe we'll apply the brakes a bit more, because we are in quite a steep grade here. All aboard! Um. Ah, uh, jeez, I'm getting so nostalgic here. <laughs> it is nice. All right, sounds very interesting. Sounds very, very. Sounds very nice. Very productive. Yeah, I don't know about that. He always had like an evil smile. He did. Mm. Ooh, we, we've no. We're not getting gold. We are late. And it's raining. But it doesn't matter. We're exploring the route. Um. Okay, can I? Right, this is the sander, by the way. Is there a lever for it anywhere here? Right, I really do need to put it in full throttle to get, um, to get going. Interesting. Um, uh, I don't know about that, yeah. Evil smile. Oh right, that was referencing that. It says, "I see." What a name for a place, <laughs> Dargle, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, but Calling All Engines was the only movie where he was wearing his happy f smile instead of the evil one, and at the end where he was clearing the rubble <laughs> with claw. If I remember correctly, Diesel Ten and Tim uh, Tim T A T M R was on the match where it was quite dark. Did Ten deliberately? Crash the pink magic one. Oh, you mean the, the the purple one, lady? Um, yeah. Well, he tried to kill all sea mansions. Yes, but then again, uh, so does the fat controller when they don't work properly. He scraps them. So, um, yeah, uh, lady. Uh, that was the name, I think. Yes, it was. Yep, to both. Boom. I love the demolition ones that take place in the construction site. Jeez, I still have a whole box of those toys that we're looking to sell if we can. Mm, I see. Although, sometimes it's nice to keep uh, old toys because, who knows, maybe you'll need them again someday. Or should I say, maybe someone else will need them from you someday. Yeah, see, this is where it's getting quite hilly. Look at how far up we've climbed already. I remember. Me too. We're approaching 50, but the speed limit's going up to 60, but then going back down to 50, so... Keeping it around 50 should be good. Jack was one of them. Mm -hmm. That's true, but I don't think these old toys are in production anymore. Yeah. 
I mean, it just depends on whether you need the money or not. If you can get by without needing the extra money from the toys, especially if they're not in production anymore, I would say keep them. In the CGI series, they did kind of ruin Diesel 10's character, though. They made him look like more of a little child bully. Mm hmm. Well, they ruined a lot of the characters in CGI, Thomas. Also, basically, m almost all of the charm as well. <clears throat> Oops, like this. This is what I want. This might also be a good place for a thumbnail. I'll just uh, keep that here for now, like this. So, oh, wow, look at this. A wooded valley behind the locomotive there. Um, <laughs> who gets afraid when the vet controller walks in? Yeah, it's always a weird relationship between the locomotives and the vet controller, especially the evil ones. Is if you're referring to what I think you're referring to, then there isn't a woman alive with low enough standards to have a kid with me. Oh, come on. <laughs> the t And by the way, yes, I was referring to a uh, child. Um, the top of the one wouldn't have done that, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was weird to see the mouths moving. Yeah. Was, yes, and they may to be before the forest, yes. Can you believe it? Yeah. I've accidentally recent ch reset chat. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, English self description. <laughs> deprecation. Boy. Yeah, self deprecation. Indeed. Actually, now is a good uh, time to. Well, in a bit, it's a good time to check whether the coaches have lights on them as well. I Probably they don't, but maybe they will. I'm not sure. Also, there is still rain falling on the windscreen, even though we're in the tunnel. That's interesting. And the coaches are just entering the tunnel now, so... Well, okay. They both are lights and are not lights. The walls are unlit, which means they're unaffected by light, which means they're unaffected by shadow, so technically it looks like they're light. However, the objects that are affected by light do not have lights on them, so it's this weird mixture. So I'm going to go back to the locomotive. And we're approaching, approaching Lidgeton, 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 Lidgeton. Not sure how to pronounce that, which is where we're stopping as well. Uh, uh, I still can't believe the drama from the Beatles narrated them. Mm. So I was just watching and eating popcorn, or maybe cyberpunk, playing cyberpunk. Mm. Yeah, that's okay. I'm fine with that. I have to break a bit. Uh, all three. Mm, that was uh, was probably good for the series publicity. Mm. Oh dear, XD. Looks like a black hole. Um, do you just mean a hole that is the color black, or do you mean a black hole as in a singularity? Uh, in the dark, those passengers look like Doctor Who villains. You're right, they do. I mean, they even look like Doctor Who villains. Uh, when they're not in the dark. <laughs> uh, the dark people, they're, they're overtaking the train. They're overtaking the train. Yeah, although they probably wouldn't call the episode that because um, dark people may be misinterpreted as meaning a specific ethnic group even though it's just a descriptor. Like, for example, happy people, or angry people, or dressed people, dark people, it's just a descriptor. However, it would probably be taken, or they probably would, they probably would be afraid that it could easily be taken as a, uh, as the name for the ethnic group which they would be afraid that people would be offended because of political correctness, which is why they wouldn't take it, even though it's perfectly innocent. Which is very frustrating. 
Uh, yes. Also, do you like how the sun looks? <laughs> oh, and... Yeah, that's, those are the clouds moving. Uh, right. Let's see, how far do we need to go? Oh, we still got to go... Quite a bit. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, and we are just so late. Um, I'm going to put it in full forward gear from the get-go. Um, by the looks of it, it won't wheel slip, which is probably what caused us to get this late. Um, basically, uh, me trying to avoid wheel slip, starting slower. Yeah. Taking over shadows, both, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like those shop mannequins. Mm, yeah. Ah, yes, very good. Or it's some shiny, happy people. <laughs> hmm. Yes, indeed. So. <laughs> a four track narrow gauge main line. That is quite something. And it goes down to uh, double gauge because apparently the other one, the other tracks were only for the stations. All oh, right, that is the handbreaker. <laughs> right, I remember. I remember now. Um, okay, that should be good. I might offend people here, but I must say this anyway. Uh, if I, someone that. If I was someone of that ethnicity, which I'm not, I think I would prefer black skin to black because black to me sounds like a uh, label, whilst black skin sounds more like a description. Interesting point of view. Uh, I personally don't agree with that. I think that uh, I think that if you're if you are talking about a specific thing, then it really doesn't matter that much how you describe it. If you're talking about someone with a uh, with a darker skin, then if you say uh, African American, or if you say black, or if you say black skinned, or if you say of African-American ethnicity, or things like that, they're all describing the same thing, and, I mean, if people get offended by being called a specific word, then sure, I accept that and I won't call them that, um, but me personally, really doesn't matter to me that much. Um, I am, again, not black, so it's kind of a biased opinion. Yeah, I agree with Afri African American. It's not a label that's stating their ethnicity. Yeah, but the ethnicity is mainly used for describing uh, their appearance. If you say, okay, for example, if okay, if I had a a radio show, uh, and there's someone someone came on, and I were to say. Um, Please welcome our guest, uh, John Charlson. He's a gentleman of, he's an African American gentleman who blah blah blah. Then, what would that using that term African American really mean? What would it do? What would it accomplish for the listeners? Well, it would inform them that um, John Charlson or whatever I called him has dark skin, and that the facial complexion would be likely be more like, um, well, African-American people. However, that, is, that exact same thing is accomplished if saying, if I were to say, uh, a black man, yeah? However, because of, um, connections, because of political correctness, if I were to say, if, if it were a radio show, someone would come in and would say, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, black gentleman Charles whatever, or John Charlson, 
then I, I, I would bet that the uh, producers of that uh, radio show would have something to say against that. Yeah? Because then you'd say, oh, that was a racist, that was a racist term, why do you say that? Well, I wanted to describe what that man looked like so that the people who can only hear what I'm saying can better visualize um, that individual. Which has the exact same effect as if I were to say African-American gentleman. Yeah? In the listener's mind, it has the exact same effect. It's just one word is acceptable, or one term, the other is deemed unacceptable. Why? What is the difference? One is slightly more complicated than the other. Um, I'm, by the way, I'm open to uh, conversation on this. This is really nice. Maybe this would also be a good spot for a uh, thumbnail. And because these, because we're not at the end, near the end of the route, I'm taking screenshots because this would be quite difficult to find um, in the stream afterwards. Um, yes, I agree with African... Uh, okay. I'm in dangerous territory here. Well, if freedom of speech was as sincere as it's supposed to be, then no, of course you wouldn't. You'd be allowed to talk about anything, as long as it doesn't put people directly in danger, like maybe state secrets or things like that. Um, but, since that is not the case, I would say yes, you are. Um, yes, an African-American gentleman. Although, I would argue that Afri African-American is a description uh, just of their ethnicity rather than their appearance. Yes, but why would you describe their ethnicity? Because of their appearance, so that people can better visualize who you mean. Um, at least that's my... That's what I think. I mean, why would you um, describe someone's ethnicity anyway, if not for that purpose? Maybe for cultural purpose, but no, because uh, someone coming, stemming from an eth being part of an eth ethnic group does not necessarily mean they have a certain culture. So... My <laughs> political correctness is just so, uh, such a sticky thing. You touch it, and then it sticks to your fingers, and you try to pull your fingers out, and then there are these long, sticky, gooey strands that stick to your fingers, and you try to clean it off, but then your tissue starts sticking as well, and you try to throw it in the bin, and it sticks to your hand until you eventually manage to scrape it off on something. Um, it's just, yeah, I think, it, yeah, it, even though it shouldn't be. If the intent behind what you're saying is good, then the words you use should be acceptable. If the intent behind what you're saying is bad, well, then the words you use don't change the intent. So if you use better words, then that just masks your intent. So, anyway, um, and that's what I mean by sticky. <laughs> Um, yes, but as far as I know, someone can be black or black-skinned without having African-American descent. Um, it depends how far back you go. I know it's a bit late, but the sun did look kind of weird. Yeah, it did. It generally does look a bit weird in Train Simulator. Um, yeah, but why all the mention... why? at all mention their skin tone. Well, even though in pop culture uh, someone's appearance is often framed to be the least important part of who they are, appearance does still play an important part. Uh, for example, the clothes you wear. If you wear, uh, say, uh, suits, then that says something different about who, how you want to express yourself. 
And yes, clothes are an expression of yourself, your skin tone isn't, that's true. However... Okay, so... However... Clothes combined with the aesthetic of, say, your hairstyle, your skin colour, your weight, all of those things, a lot of which are um, considered almost semi-taboo, because, oh no, appearance doesn't matter, um, at all, uh, describing how someone looks is important if you want to visualize what it might be like to speak to that individual. Not that it changes anything about how you expect they would act. Well, the skin tone anyways, but the, the clothes, yes. Um, but still, it's, an, it's a part of who someone is. So not describing it would be leaving out a part of the representation of who that individual is. Um, that's what I was thinking too, but I guess it's the hypothetical situation. Uh, some people are sort of sensitive about some things, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. And I think there's a diff there are two there's, there's a difference between um, genuine sensitivity because you're sensitive about a certain subject because of whatever reason, and instilled sensitivity. Now, instilled sensitivity is if other people act like you should be sensitive about a certain subject, and then that makes you sensitive about it because it's like. Um, Okay, here's a subject. Nudity, yeah? Now, when I just said that, you probably already felt a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe not, but probably. The, the likelihood is you did. You did probably feel a little bit uncomfortable. Why? I mean, <laughs> you're always in your body. It's just whether you've got clothes on, on top or not. It doesn't change anything. You're you're still all there, even if you've got clothes on. That shouldn't in that shouldn't have that reaction in a perfect world. But for most people, it does. Why? Because they are taught that uh, nudity is something taboo, something you shouldn't really discuss it. Oh, he's discussing. Oh, no, he's talking about that. Oh, no. Yeah? And so people can be sensitive about these kind of things purely because other people act like they should be sensitive about those subjects. Your thoughts are welcome. Um, makes the same point as you. Uh, sticky, yes, that's a perfect analogy. Thank you very much. Yeah, true is exactly roller coaster time. Oh, it should be, yes. Ha um, well, this ends in 10 minutes, so I think we'll do that still. <laughs> I'm not, definitely not gonna get any sort of uh, <laughs> uh, reward for finishing this because I've got over a thousand negative points, mainly for being late. Um, but that's okay. Um, I think he'll finish the roof first, yes. Alright. Uh, that's why you sometimes have to go into my new detail in books. Yeah, exactly. And by the way, we are going to go up to here. So we're coming down from... Um, we've, we've driven from here, we're going to go up to here. The route is still going all the way up to here. This is a huge route. We're definitely not going to be able to drive all of it. And I'm speeding, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Shadows, exactly. Oh, jeez. Thrown in at the deep end, are we? Why not? What's wrong with the deep end? Um. <laughs> yeah, issues won't be solved by silence. Exactly. Well, if taboo means a prohibition on something usually repulsive, then unity does come into it, I guess. Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. Yeah, it's, I get what you mean. And you. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You are 
describing it in such a roundabout way that you have to put in wink wink why not just say the word why, why not just say the word I mean this stream isn't for kids it's 13 plus you can use words <laughs> yeah although I'd more call it unjust negative reputation Maybe. Sure. I'll give you a wink back. <laughs> Ooh, this is nice. It's really getting quite cloudy up here. Yeah, true that. I put the wink in because I don't use it. Uh, I was just talking, taking the mic. Hmm. Charles, what word did you think I meant? Well... If you say unity and then you put in wink wink and you in connection with taboo and prohibition in connection to nudity the logical resolution would be you meant sex uh, yes because with 13 content you can't use words exactly yes I mean you have to be so careful if you use any word it'll just be shut down immediately um, did you mean something different, Mr. W? Because if so, then that was quite unclear. Um, no, no, no. It was more common on the use of repulsive in taboo and the connection with unity. What do you mean? Connection with unity and repulsive. I don't get it. Below 30, I meant, yeah. Again, a make take. I don't get what you mean by and the connection with Unity. Do you mean the Unity game engine? No, I don't think so. It's more common on the use of repulsive in taboo and the connection with Unity. Huh, I don't know what you mean. The definition of taboo is an implicit prohibition on something usually against an utterance or behavior based on a cultural sense that it, it is excessively repulsive or perhaps too scared for uh, s sacred for ordinary people. Yeah, I know what the definition of taboo is, but why unity? Um, unity game engine, hmm, Charlie's. I first thought you had said unity when you said nudity. Oh, right. Ah, I see. Shadows, you must have missed my message on that. Oh, right, yeah, probably. So it was a subtle suggestion that unity is repulsive. I don't use unity, so it was a comment and a joke on that. Hmm. Um, about unity and unity both being taboo. Oh! Oh, right, so you, you did mean the game engine unity. I thought you meant unity as in the unity between uh, two people. <laughs> Why is, should Unity Game Engine be taboo? Yep, there we go. Why would uni the Unity Game Engine be taboo? I honestly don't understand that. I didn't take a screenshot, I didn't want to. I see, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what you mean. Because it's repulsive. That's the point of the uniformed joke. And then I just said that I'd rather call it to have an understated reputation. I'm just very confused by this whole thing. Uniformed. Uninformed. You mean... I don't know why this is so confusing. We called tell. Can't. We called. We can tell. Oh, we can tell. Oh, right. <laughs> hmm. Well. If you tell a joke and everybody gets it, great joke. If you tell a joke, nobody gets it, you have to explain it, bad joke. If you tell a joke, Nobody gets it, you have to explain it, but nobody gets the explanation. What makes it the joke then? 
It was suggested that Unity was like to be repulsive. Okay. Unity? Do you mean the game engine Unity? Or what else do you mean? Do you mean... Okay, do you mean the game engine Unity? Yes or no? Or that Unity went under the definition of taboo in... Definition... Yes. Oh, so you did mean the game engine. You did mean the game engine. Oh, right. When you said no, 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 that must have been referencing something else. When you said no, 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 I thought you meant... No, 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 you don't mean the game engine. <laughs> Oh, this is this confusion is just brilliant. Why would the Unity game engine be taboo? Because it's too repulsive. Help me, Kango. <laughs> Helps. <laughs> <clears throat> this is also a nice a nice view. That might be nice. Alright, let me explain. I, by all means, I'm just very confused and I would love for someone to explain. This is a nice view though. Is it not? Oh, it is still raining. Um, shall I say yes, because it's too repulsive. It was basically saying in an offhand, indirect way that Unity, the game engine, was repulsive. I know it's not, and I don't know if Unity engine is good or bad. The joke, um, opportunity was there, so I made it. Oh, right. Uh, my guess is that Mr. W here with calling Unity 3 Taboo was referring to it having bad reputation. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even know it had a bad reputation. Well, it did a few years back, but its reputation has improved again. Oh? <laughs> so it was just a play on words then, which I completely misunderstood. If I had the chance to take the mic, so I stink and took it. <laughs> I am English, he exclaimed. Yeah, I mean, that's absolutely fine, but do you have to do it in such a confusing way? <laughs> We're just about uh, four and three quarters kilometers away. Yes, a play on words. Mm. Yeah, I get it now. The thing is, I got it before but then, when you typed no, 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 I thought you were referencing what I thought uh, the, the joke was, which was correct, but I thought that was referencing that. So I thought you were saying no, 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 that's not what you meant. So that is where a lot of the confusion came from, I think. If it was RL, I think I would have been clear uh, due to my tone. Exactly. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been. Will we meet some poison dart lions on this journey? Poison dart lions? Hmm. Perhaps. Most likely. Right, I'm off for a nap. You're off for a nap? <laughs> I mean, okay. If you're off for a nap, then. Uh, right. Although. Why? We're going to do Roller Coaster Tycoon after this. It's only about... Unless there was a jo another joke. Uh, it was probably another joke. Um, and if it wasn't clear, it would have also been so much easier to explain. Yeah. Another Poison Dark Frog. Yeah, yeah not really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, poison Dark Lion doesn't exist, Ariel. Mm, that's what they want you to think. Really, it was again a joke on how the explanation was exhausting. Yeah, I did think it was 
it was that, but I wasn't sure. Um, I know that. Mm. That's a little lake down there. It's nice. I think I would definitely need more experience with this locomotive to have um, any chance at getting uh, gold, silver, or copper, or probably even a check mark on this route. Um, because it's just a bit difficult to drive, really. Uh, besides, I can stay up long because I got no school tomorrow. Congratulations there. Just under three kilometers to go now. Oh, it's stopped. No, it's not stopped raining. Here's the stream title suggestion fail jokes and the fail explanations. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if I didn't get that. <laughs> nice. Hmm? Yes, I agree. Quite strange to, to drive from this side, isn't it? I take it you are just watching the Chaos Unfold, Slovenia? Probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see the sun shining onto the windows from over there somewhere. So that's strange. Why is the window wiper sound coming from the left? The window wiper sound is coming from behind me. That's a bit strange. If I'm looking forward, if I'm looking forward, I can't really tell. But if it's if I've got the camera turned, then yeah, uh, yeah, it is quite strange. Feels more like a British train like that. Oh, that's where we're at. Oh, that's interesting. So as we're approaching the final station in this session, we've driven a bit less than half of the length of this route. You can see, uh, center player, we are here, the route continues up for there, maybe I'd say we've driven actually a third of the route, maybe a little bit more. So what do you think so far? Hmm, what, so what percent? Hmm, maybe it's had a confusing day? <laughs> well. Maybe it's had a confusing past few minutes. <laughs> oh, and the speed increased to 90 kilometers per hour back there. So what do you think of the route so far? Good? I'm listening to the chaos unfolding. <laughs> Shreys, you're not rolling, but you're sure, but you sure are coasting. <laughs> yeah, it's very... It's very scenic. I agree. And yes, coasting. Aha, so I was right. Yes, because I went back into the other seat. If I had stayed here, you'd been you'd have been left. Left in that seat. Haha. And open the doors. And there we go. 
Uh, more or less. <laughs> Did you laugh at my expense, Slavic Eagle? Asks Mr. W. Actually, I can also put up the other pantograph now. And oh, that was that one, but that's fine. Done for today. I turned it off, that's fine. Yeah, zero points. Because I've got negative scores. A lot of speeding a bit, but the big ones are the timeliness penalty. Uh, the first one I actually got a few points, then minus 200, minus 300, minus almost 600, and then minus 1000 at the end. Oh, but I did get a check mark. I mean, that's something at least. So, we have arrived, yes. Everyone off, mind the lines near the exit, they like to bite down on things. <laughs> at least you're honest. So, that is the end of the train simulator stream. I'm really happy that uh, I got to drive on that route. Shut down. And yes, I'll start the Roller Coaster Tycoon stream momentarily. I'll end this stream first, give it another title, and then I'll start up the Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 stream, which should be good. So, um, but you promised us mountains. If I look at one second. Okay, if I go to the map, you can see that. Uh, where was it? Down here somewhere? Yes, over here. You can see we went from over here. Right, we went from here. I can zoom in now. So we went from here, I think, to Nottingham Road. So we went this little bit. Yes? And the route continues up to this bit. If we look up here, you can see that this is getting quite a bit mountainous here. Um, or at least, at the very least, very hilly. You can see uh, this sort of landscape here, um, with a railway snaking its way through here. Um, yes. So. An African route. Very interesting. Uh, should I use 3D map maybe? It was 3D map. I know you, you only saw it later. So, see you in a few minutes. So, until then, bye.